What you can do, remember, you can use some of those properties of limits to simplify things. It's harder to look at this whole function altogether, but you can break it apart into things that you can either figure out or limits that you already know. This, this function, you have two functions added together here. So what you could do is algebraically separate it. You could say that has to be the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of these two separate functions. You know, you can separate a, a fraction, an algebraic fraction like that if there's a single thing on the bottom. Right, you remember that kind of thing? A plus B over C is equal to A over C plus B over C. But please realize that A over B plus C is not equal to A over B plus A over C. Not true. This is not true. How does that help? What can I change this into now? What is this? What is this simplified to here? Five, right? This is just five. And actually, you can write it as two separate limits. This is the limit of the sum of two functions, right? So you can write it as you can write it as the limit of five, which is pretty easy to figure out, plus the limit of sine x over x, which is one that we already just looked at. What's the limit of 5 to approach infinity? <laughs> it's 5, right? 2. It's 5, right? It's always 5. If the function is always 5, no matter how close to infinity you get, it's always 5. And this one was, what did we say? Zero. This one is 0, so it's 5. Notice that Notice that at this stage where I um, actually evaluated the limits, I didn't write this anymore. When, when you're actually sitting down and evaluating the limits, you don't write limit anymore. I know that in the past I noticed people don't know when to stop writing this. You stop writing that when you actually figure out what that limit is. You evaluate that limit. Okay. Try the next one with similar uh, logic. Okay. Well, I shrink that down a bit. You can do that on your paper if you uh, need some space. Oh, wait, you can't. Sorry. That's, that is me, and I'm sorry. That's like what my kids do to each other. One of them goes out and gets some treat or something or other. They have to come home and somehow find a way to let the other one know that they had a treat when they were out. Oh, we went for ice cream. <laughs> hey, no fair, blah, blah, blah. I have three kids. Did you figure out the second one yet? I'm glad I'm recording all of this, by the way, but. <laughs> How far do we get with this here? This is the same as. Same as the limit of uh, 3x squared over x squared. Plus the limit of, well, I'll put it all together here first. And we'll split it up. Plus the limit of 1 over x squared equals, and we're looking at each of these limits separately, right? This is the limit of 3 plus limit of this function here. This one you can see what's happening just because, I mean, up above here, this was one that we knew. We had just figured out. So either it's a limit you know or it's a limit you can do by thinking, remember? You can smile if you, you're slightly smiling there. 1 over x squared, 1 over infinity squared. What's that going to be? 0, right? 1 over and bigger and bigger number squared. Infinity squared is infinity, right? You know, little kids say infinity plus 1 and all that kind of stuff. It's infinity. You can't have infinity plus 1. I, yeah, <laughs> okay, well. Some children say that. <laughs> you never said that? I'm sure somebody has said that, that 
Well, oh, I have this many. Well, I have this many. Well, I have infinity. Well, I have infinity plus one. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, this limit of cosine of one over x. You can't really use the same necessarily the same kind of logic because this is not this is not adding two functions together. This is a composition, a function of a function. So you have to think about the inside function first, if you know the limit of that. There's an inside and an outside function, right? It's it's cos of one over x. It's a composition, right? Composition of functions. So if you can think about what's happening with that inside function, what's happening with the inside function? One over infinity <coughs> is zero, right? So this is going to be this is going to be cosine of zero, basically, right? One over. So actually, yeah, cosine of zero is. One, right? I mean, you probably should do that. You should probably say, you should probably leave it like this for one more step here. One, right? That's one. So this is limit as you approach infinity is one there. You can check these by graphing. Graph that function and see what it looks like. This is why you have the calculator. The calculator can give you a lot of insight. Again, the, the title of that textbook says graphical, numerical, algebraic. They want you to, to be able to look at things several different ways. If you graph that function, you can get a sense of what it is, right? Cos of 1 divided by x. It should level off at, at 1. <coughs> okay, there's that function, and it levels off at 1 like you expect from what you just wrote down there. Make sure you realize you can check things like that, okay? Incidentally, what's happening in the middle there? Well, let me show you on this instead. Not that we necessarily need to. Uh... What, do, what do you think is happening in the middle there? Y equals, what was it again? Cos of. Hey, 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 hey. Guys, only one person can talk here. What's happening in the middle of that? Because they're fractions? What do you mean? When you take the cosine of something, cosine fluctuates between 1 and negative 1. Yeah, these numbers, 1 over x, when x gets smaller and smaller, this gets extremely large. But cosine just keeps fluctuating as it goes along the number. So if this is changing faster and faster, it's fluctuating faster and faster, right? If you do this, right? The more you the more you do this with the thing, the more it just keeps uh, oscillating as you get close to the center. Why is this not letting me go anymore here? It can't comprehend this. Uh, what a it was free, I guess. You really can't expand the scale any more than that? Are you kidding me? Anyways, okay. The more you expand that, the the more it's going to oscillate. Oh, maybe over here. There we go. I know you could probably sit and watch this all day. It won't let me. Won't let me go anymore. Just what? <laughs> it won't let me go once I'm into down here. It won't do it. Okay. Uh, anyways, it's oscillating more and more as you go there. Okay? This calculator doesn't show it very well, but you could do the same thing if you zoomed in on it. Okay, let's look at infinite limits as as you approach finite numbers. <coughs> 